Okay, it's time for level one of the Google cross-site scripting challenge. Here it says level one, hello world of XSS description. This level demonstrates a common cause of cross-site scripting where user input is directly included on the page without proper escaping. Interact with the vulnerable application window below and find a way to make it execute JavaScript of your choosing. You can take actions inside the vulnerable window or directly edit its URL bar. And the mission objective is to inject a script that will pop up a JavaScript alert in the frame below. Once we show the alert, we'll be able to advance to the next level. Okay, so the criteria is we need to execute some type of JavaScript inside of this web page, and we need to get an alert box to pop up here. So when you're starting out trying to look for cross-site scripting vulnerabilities, in this case in particular, it's already giving us a hint. It's telling us that user input is directly included in the page without proper escaping. So, so far we know there's no user input on whatever the first page is because, well, we haven't performed any inputs. Um, and if we take a look at this application, it looks as if, um, let's see, we have a URL bar. Uh, let's see, a level. Um, okay, so we, ju we just have a, um, a URL at the top. We have a logo here. We have the ability to use this input box to put in a search query and then click the search button. So this is basically like a very, very basic search engine. So let's start by trying to just put in a word. Let's put in the word test and let's click search. Okay, so it appears visually at least a few things changed. First of all, we can see that we have a query parameter here, which is after, after the URL. Um, it also looks like that query parameter is reflected down here in the HTML. So my hypothesis here is that what's going on is whenever you do a search using this vulnerable application, the query is appended to the URL, and then the URL is reflected without any form of validation directly into the HTML. And we can actually inspect to see if that's what's happening. And in the inspector, you'll see Oh, this is actually being bolded, so that's a good sign too. Let's try something a little bit more complex. Let's try to see if we can put an HTML tag in there. So let's put a B tag in for bold, or actually I think that's deprecated. Let's do strong and then test. And uh, we know that this is already being bolded. It looks like Google actually used the B tag. Maybe this is an old, a very old um, interview application, but regardless, inside of the B tag is the strong tag and the strong tag was not blocked in any way it went through so let's try something like a U so we can see it visually and here you see the U tag for underline uh, actually worked as well if we inspect right here we'll see that we were able to put a U tag around it so what this says is any HTML that we put in this query is not going to undergo any form of validation so the correct answer is probably to open up a script tag followed by an alert followed by a closing script tag and if this works which it did it says congratulations you've executed an alert undefined I assume that's the value of the alert you can now advance to the next level okay so this is a classical reflected cross-site scripting attack it's reflected because the value of the query parameter is never stored anywhere. So it's not stored on a server, it doesn't come from elsewhere, it comes from within your browser. Now there may be a case where it actually hits a server and bounces back, but there's no point in which this is stored and the sync, that's where this query parameter is converted into executable script, is actually just the browser HTML and whenever a browser sees a script tag, it makes the assumption that the script needs executed immediately once it loads into the DOM, and that's what happened here. We were able to load some JavaScript in, and if we could trick another user into loading the same JavaScript in, in aka sending them a link to this search result, or just convincing them to copy-paste something into the previous page, then we could get them to execute any JavaScript code we wanted on their machine.